team chemistry. And I think, I mean, we've got high hopes for this week and um, we kind of want that both championships just to, because it feels like pure domination if you win the regular season and the tournament. And we're looking forward to get going. And it's kind of weird being here two days without even, without even playing. We're not used to that. Now, you, when you kind of look at the pitching staff as a whole, obviously you winning your award, Tristan being all <clears> conference, <throat> I think it's pretty impressive that Pete got honorable mention despite, you know, only only having a couple of, uh, you know, big 12 starts under his belt. What has worked for this pitching staff and, you know, how confident are you in your pitching as you guys head into the postseason? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think it's it's cool to see. I think there's only three, besides Camel, three starting pitchers and two of them on the same team. That doesn't doesn't happen very often. And I think if Pete were to get more Big 12 starts, he would have definitely been on first or second team. And I think the staff is just – we feel really good right now. I think Coach Allen's done a wonderful job with us and um, giving each player what they need because I think that definitely – varies and I think he's also we've done a really good job of keeping guys that aren't throwing like getting their work in and whether it be inner squads or live ABEs and I think some of those guys are going to play a huge role this week and the next next couple of weeks and so I think you're going to see some big roles like Southern and Shiflet and guys like that who haven't really thrown much like I mean we use Cole and Nixon and Tanner but other than that that there's guys that have been getting their work in and Coach Allen's been staying on them and I think those guys are going to play big role in those these next couple of weeks. Weston, you're up. Ty, David said you were a little bit frustrated after that start on Thursday night. Um, you know, what are some things that you took away from that start that you want to improve on with your next outing? Yeah, I mean, I watched film a couple of times and it was like, like every other at bat was a strikeout. Like, I felt like my stuff was good and mm -hmm. um, just made a couple of mistakes and they took advantage of it. and uh just to keep going i mean it's it's a long season and um i definitely got things i need to work on but uh just yeah just keep going i think getting the ball back down and my downhill angle is huge and i think that opens up my elevated instead of just kind of living in the middle especially left-handed hitters and so just been working on that all week and um just staying with my cues and uh getting ready to roll again and how do you feel physically i mean this time of the year uh, you, you've thrown a lot of innings at this point. A lot of starting pitchers have as they kind of gearing up for coming off of that regular season. How do you feel physically? How much did that off week kind of help you? And have you had any sort of blister issues at all? David said you hadn't mentioned anything to him about it the last couple of weeks, so it didn't sound like it was any sort of issue. No, yeah. I mean, since Tech, I got in touch with Aaron Sanchez with Dutulo, and he kind of walked me through that and – and um I mean, after a couple of days, it was good to go. I was ready to go for TCU, and I haven't had any problems since. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's I feel great. I put the work in this offseason and, and every week to keep my body in great shape. And I think the, the off week definitely came at a perfect time. I mean, all of our pitchers, me, T. Steve, and Pete, just being able to catch our breath and um, really kind of focus on ourselves. And we had – two weeks until we started. And so it was, we were able to actually get some real work in in the pan and focus on some things that you usually can't do during season because you gotta be ready to start again. So I think it was good for our bodies and, and for our work as well. Hey, Jason, go ahead. Hey, Ty, uh, Jason Bristol from KHOU in Houston. Um, hey, I was talking with Colton a couple of months ago and he mentioned uh, you guys working out a lot together, I guess, during the early stages of the pandemic and things like that. And I was just wondering what kind of things you were, uh, you guys did and, and focused on while, while you were together. Yeah. I mean, just, he's one of my good buddies and we've been best friends since like eighth grade and um, just always, it's always a competition trying to push each other and, and see who can move more weight and, and throw harder, which you, you'd be surprised how hard that kid can throw. But um yeah, I mean, we do a lot of things and always competing, but it, yeah, we're a good step away from baseball too. We know when to turn it on and turn it off. And um, I think we help each other with just visual things as well. Like I kind of tell him how I would approach him and what I see in his stance and at bats. And 
he'll kind of stand in on some of my pins and, and sides and see what pitches pop early and, and kind of what he sees from the hitter's perspective. So that was definitely huge. You know, it's, I know you're focused on the season and all this, but I mean, man, you check these mock drafts and you guys are like within picks of each other. That's pretty, I mean, how crazy is that to you? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's cool. We've, I mean, we've grown up dreaming of this and um, we still got a long way to go, but I think it's, it's going to be exciting and, I don't know if we'll do something together or not, but um, I mean, we're definitely always pulling for each other. And if I may, one more, I, I was just curious, what do you, wh which area do you think you've taken the biggest leap forward, um, I guess, this season? Um, I mean, I think just, just mentally being able to deal with starts and move on to the next one is something that is tough as a starting pitcher, especially in the big 12 and um, just being able to bounce back and, and, continue to work every day is something that I've definitely matured in, in my development. Thank you. Kirk, Thank you to everybody on the call as well. Thank you. Kirk, go ahead. Uh, hey, Ty, congratulations on your award and, and the championship. Uh, in your mind, Ty, do you feel like you are already assured to host a regional and super regional if you keep winning? Yeah, I mean, we're not really too focused on that right now. Or, um, I mean, we know we're where we're seated and, and what the plan looks like. But our goal right now is to take it day by day and win this first game in the conference tournament and, and win the second of five championships. And that's where we're focused at right now. And um, I think we'll look towards that more after this week is over. And are you uh, projected to start the first game and will you be on a pitch count? So you'll be absolutely fresh and ready for the regional. Uh, I am going game one. I. Um, I don't know about a pitch count. I mean, my body feels good and I'll have something like eight or nine days until the regional starts. So I'm sure I'll, I'll let it fly like every week. Hey guys, we got time for a few more questions. Let's keep it to one each since there's a few more in queue. Chip, start us off. Ty, um, I wondered if you could talk about, um, you know, the impact of Cole Quintanilla where he's improved the most in your mind. And then thoughts on the young guys, Tanner Witt and Aaron Nixon. Yeah, I mean, Cole is, he's taking a huge step and uh, it's, I mean, it's big league stuff. If you look at his last couple outings, it's the sliders unreal right now. His fastball velocity has been where we've seen it in the past. And I think it's, I mean, I know I've talked about it, but I think it's just maturity. He's, he's got an idea of what he wants to do up there. And um, he's got that confidence that that's needed on the mound and, now that he's got that confidence, it's, it's dangerous. And I think he's, he's going to play a huge part next couple of weeks. And um, I mean, I've got nothing but good things to say about Tanner and, and Nixon. They're, I mean, they're workhorses and they've kind of, it's, it's a great feeling as a starting pitcher, having them behind us. And um, they put up great numbers all year and they're going to continue to do what they know how to do. Joe, go ahead. Ty, y'all are fifth in the country in whip. It's at 1.16. Does that, what does that reflect to you? Does that mean that y'all are a really good strike throwing staff? Y'all have a good defense? What does that number signify to you? I think it's all of it, but I mean, our defense has been unreal. I think Mitch and Trey and, and Hammer and even or Cam and Zubia, I mean, they've all been, our infield's been really, really solid. And, um, but I think just our mentality on the mound is, is something we've really talked about more this year than. I've ever talked about on a team ever. And um, that's from Tulo and Coach Allen and, and Coach Pierce, just the pitch by pitch mentality and visualizing your spots and what you want to do. And I think this pitching staff really bought in and it's something that's really cool to see. And, and the kind of conversations we have after games is really unique and um, it's really in depth for a college pitching staff. And I think all that, all of our work, our infield, the amount of time our infielders put in, it's, I think it's all a, a reason why that number's where it's at. Two last ones, Jeff, go ahead. Ty, how did you find out about the award? Was it a social media thing like the rest of us or did you get some phone call that you'll remember forever? Uh, I was, uh, I was throwing my pen on Sunday and uh, Carly was at the field and they let her know and she came out and told me while I was throwing my pen or, right before I started. So that was pretty exciting. And, um,
but quickly had to flush it and focus on my pin because I have things to work on. Last one, Danny, close it out. Ty, going back to something you talked about earlier, do you believe that this team has enough pitching, especially after you, Tristan, and, and Pete, to compete in the postseason where you probably are going to need more than just you three? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've got six, seven guys that we're including the starters that are that we constantly rely on. And I think that the people that we don't use, like I said, that the Southerns and, and people like that are going to play huge roles. And um, I think mentally they're right to where in those big, we put ourselves in those big time situations. And I got a feeling that they're going to, they're going to perform in those as well. So I think the staff is a lot deeper than, than people really see from the outside, just because the people we use have been so good. But um, yeah, I think, I think overall the staff is, can compete at with anybody in the country. Thanks, Ty. I appreciate the time. <clears throat> hey, Coach, you got us? Good morning. I have you. Good morning. You want to start it off with some uh, thoughts going into practice, and then we'll open it up to questions? Yeah, I mean, we had a good trip. Um, good night's sleep, getting ready to head over for a little cage workout onto the field and just kind of get our timing and reps in and be ready to compete. Great. Thank you. Kirk, start us off. Yeah, David, congratulations on winning the conference and being coach of the year. I'm curious how you're approaching this specific tournament. I know you want to win it, but what are your what are the other goals that you have to try to get out of this tournament? Maybe like work for some pitchers that don't throw as much or keeping your starters fresh or what? Well, first of all, thank you. And secondly, you know, the tournament's always interesting if you're in a good spot with, with your resume. Um, because you want to go out and compete and try to win the tournament, like you said. But at the same time, they're probably not going to extend a starter. You're probably not going to take a guy back to back um, as much as a team that is in a little bit more desperate position to get into a national tournament. So it, it's a little bit tricky because we're going to compete against some teams that are do or die, and we're going to compete at the highest level we can, but also be smart. So you don't want to portray it like that to your team. You want the team to feel like that we're doing everything at all costs to win the game, and we are within our health and the best thing for our team moving forward. And anybody on the – especially, I guess, your hitters – Anybody you're looking forward to kind of getting out of slumps or mini slumps that, boy, I hope we can kind of get them going before the regional in your plans? I mean, all of them would be nice. It would be perfect. But, no, I mean, really, we, we pretty much have our lineup. And I'd like to see Murph Staley still play uh, an extended role if, if it calls for it because I think he can help us – both offensively and defensively, especially against left-handed pitching. Um, Peter Gabb is with us as another right-hander, and then Campbell and Ford give us the speed that at times that we can utilize either in the short game or in the running game. We both play good defense. And then, you know, the catchers, uh, DJ and Silas have split some time with Silas carrying most of the ball, but Peyton Powell is another one that's a very good hitter for us that, could come off the bench. So none of those guys are out of the mix. We've just been pretty comfortable with our lineup, but hopefully we stay healthy. Chip, go ahead. Hello, Chip. David, how's, how's it going? Um, Good. I know you were you had high expectations for Antico and Melendez coming in, but your newcomers, the freshmen, guys like Tanner Witt, um, Aaron Nixon, um, Daly, have they even exceeded your expectations as freshmen? I and think Daly out? has because we – with Mitch, we just knew a little bit less of Mitch. He didn't play at a national level like uh, Nixon and, and Woody did. So, um, he's been the, the biggest surprise of our, of our young kids um, for the simple fact that we weren't even sure if we were going to play him early on because it, I thought physically he was ready. I didn't think he was going to compete at the, for the job at shortstop, but when we moved him to the 
to the right side at second. His, his arm really plays there. Uh, his footwork plays there. He, he's good on the pivot. Um, and he's just fit in offensively. But just mentally, how would he be able to handle that as a true freshman? You know, Nixon and Whip both played Team USA. Both were on the area code uh, teams. And so they played at a very high level outside of their high school even. So um, we expected them to be good. I think Nixon is probably advanced a little bit more so, a little quicker than I thought he would. And Tanner's about right where we felt. And Silas, Silas Ardwan, just, you know, the guy's unbelievable from a fielding, you know, standpoint. Just what, what does he bring to this, to this team? He's just got a big time desire to be great. And I think he's a great teammate and he's, you know, he's got a pedigree from his pop of uh, playing in the big leagues and that's helped him a lot. And so he's able to talk to his dad about things that most kids can't talk to their dad about when it comes to a high level of, of baseball. And so that's really helped him in his advancement, but the kid's just a winner. Uh, he's a great teammate and he wants to do everything possible to help the team both offensively and defensively. And I think for a young catcher, the biggest thing is trying to get to know the staff and how to push the right buttons to each pitcher. And he's doing a nice job with that. Joe, go ahead. David, y'all are, y'all are fifth nationally in whip. It's 1.16. And I know that, uh, Fielding does play a part in that, but how much is that just an ability for your staff to be able to pound the zone more so than they have in years past? Well, it's fun to watch, first of all, because, you know, when you have pitchers go out there and make the opposing team earn what they get, um, the defense likes it, uh, which makes them better. Um, But it's just a much more advanced quality pace, I guess. I mean, when you see our guys just attack the zone and and trust their stuff and trust their defense, um, just gives you opportunity to know that that we're going to catch the ball and know that uh, the other team's going to have to earn it. You know, Ty had a tough one the other night, Thursday, but they still had to earn everything. He didn't give them anything. Made a couple of mistakes and they ambushed his – his fastball a little bit, but at the same time, they had to perform to, to do it. And I just like that style. And I think when you can control the number of runners on base, uh, you can minimize their opportunities and there's the reflection. And that's what they've done such a good job of. And I think they feed off of each other as well. Um, just trying to compete against each other to one up the last guy. And I like that. And then Ty said a couple minutes ago after games, the words he used were unique conversations after starts, after outings. So what, what do y'all talk about that he would make him say that y'all have unique conversations after outings? I think every guy talks to different guys. Um, like Ty has a great rapport with our, our entire coaching staff. And, you know, we talked about size advancement. Silas can be honest with him. And Silas can tell him, you know, things he needs to hear from his perspective. And then he gets it from Coach Allen because they spend so much time together in their prep. And then Tulo gives him a piece from the mental side and what he sees from a hitter's perspective at a high level. And then I usually come in and during his workout the day after and just check on him and see if there's anything I can do to help or just maybe talk a little bit about how he felt, how he's feeling. And so it's just continuation of just reinforcing what he needs to hear. And sometimes uh, not necessarily a tough conversation with Ty, but at at times we just need to discuss uh, a pitch or a grip. And I think that's what they've been working on as well this past week. Danny, go ahead. David, you said after Saturday that you and Sean still had to discuss um, how you guys were going to set up your rotation for the tournament. And, um, Ty just said he was going Wednesday. What kind of went into that factor? Was it just wanting to keep it business as usual, or was it is it a little bit deeper than that? Well, he's only one day early, 
and I didn't think he was overly stressed. He pitched a hundred innings, excuse me, a hundred pitches. Um, and there's two ways to look at it. You could go with the number four and bullpen it, but then you have a potential of beating your bullpen up. I would much rather start with our number one guy if he's ready and we feel like he's ready. So that's the reason. And then Tristan, same thing through 85, 86 pitches. So he's in line to move up one day. Um, and so that continues with Pete. And I think it puts our bullpen in a much better situation. And then I don't know if you've had, if you've thought much about this, but the way that the big 12 tournament is set up, is that ideal? Do you like this format or is there another way you would like to see a tournament like this um, run? I mean, personally, I don't like the postseason tournament at all. Uh, I would prefer a, an additional weekend series and it forces teams to create an RPI schedule and you can get the same number of guys or teams in the postseason by not playing a postseason tournament. Uh, I, I don't think you make money off of a postseason tournament and I think you have a potential to beat your team up um, going into a regional. And honestly, if you're seventh, eighth, ninth in the league, I mean, it's like if you lose 100 games in the big leagues, what gives you the right to then have one weekend to make it into the postseason? Our game is played on longevity. And so that's my personal opinion. But if we're going to play a tournament, um, I'm fine with the setup. It's a, a, a shorter version of Omaha. So I'm okay with the setup. I like it better than the pod, I guess. Justin, go ahead. David, knowing that you're probably not going to extend him very far, but what do you want to see from Ty in that outing on Wednesday? He said he had some things he was working on in the bullpen. Is it, is it kind of getting back to getting that fastball angle, getting on top of the ball a little bit more? I, I think so. I think that's when he's at his best when you see that. But it's timing and his delivery that causes that. Um, and they've worked really hard on the changeup. And so – and he's continued to work hard on the changeup. I think he just needs to feel confident in that pitch and a pitch that he can throw that feels like a fastball. So he's not tinkering with the grip so much or manipulating the grip so much to make it work for him. And hopefully they found one this week. Um, but I think for his his advancement for, for moving forward in the postseason is let's see how he does against left-handed hitters. That's been – somewhat of a nemesis. So uh, how he attacks left-handed hitters is going to be critical. Got time for one last one. Got to get coach on the bus to practice. Uh, Jason, go ahead. Hi, David. Uh, Jason Bristol from KHOU in Houston. Uh, just real quick, uh, which area have you seen Ty, I guess, take the leap, biggest leap forward this season? Um, he's always maintained his velocity throughout, but uh, his stamina and endurance is off the charts, and it's because of his work. But I would say his biggest leap forward is command. Uh, just having the ability to, to really stay in the strike zone, even when he gets out of sync a little bit, he has the ability to get back into it.